and welcome back to Winter Wolf Time. I do apologise greatly for um, my absence of the past like month and a half, two months, whatever. And um, the sad but true fact is that Guild Wars got the better of me. I'm like level 53 now or something stupid like that and I've been caning it for like since it first came out. So for that I do apologise. It's actually my birthday tomorrow, tomorrow being the 3rd of October. So I'm actually off to Prague. Uh, so we're making preparations and plans for that as well. That also contributes to the fact why I've not been doing many videos as of late. However today I actually have a special guest on the show. There's Mr. Pidge, the rarest bird of all, the rare and elusive Mr. Pidge. <laughs> uh, Mr. Pidge is uh, co-presenting on, uh, on the on the show today, because um, uh, today we're going to bring you something a little bit different, and you'll find out about that later. So, Mr. Pidge, how have you been, my friend? I've been all right. I've been busy, busy at work, getting things painted, Try, doing a bit of work on the great and clean one and stuff like that. And the great and clean one of nurgly nurgleness. Uber nurgle. Uber nurgle. That's uber nurgle. Nurgle face. <laughs> so, Penis. Yeah. Got a few bits and pieces to show you, some of my own stuff as well, and what I've been doing on the Nurgle thing. So yeah. Sweet! Sweet! Okay, that's going to be a super note, like, see the super note contest. Right, okay, anyway, um, so, without further ado, let's crack on with the hobby tip. <laughs> Okie dokie guys, this is time for another hobby tip. So today what we're going to be looking at, we're going to be looking at how to make really simple textured bases without having to spend an absolute friggin' fortune on resin cast stuff or the expensive Games Workshop basing kits. Although you do get quite a lot out of the Games Workshop basing kits, I must agree, I must agree on that. Basically you will need a base of your choosing, I'm choosing this one. You will need some green stuff. Now essentially what you do is you get your green stuff and you obviously this is this is our obviously pre-rolled pre-rolled green stuff pre uh, pre pre mushed together. And what we're going to do is we're just going to smother it on our base. I've left this a bit too long and it's cured quite a bit, so we might uh, have a bit of an issue here. But what we're going to do? Balls wasn't big enough. This needs to be warmer. There we go. It's getting a bit more malleable now. God damn it! Wish my radiator was on. Uh, fucking get in there, you bastard. Come on, you fucker. There we go. Right, so we're going to smoosh this over the base, like so. We're going to pull it to the edges. Don't worry if it actually goes over, because we'll trim off that excess uh, later on. So basically, you're just going to pull it until it fully covers the base. Like that. Well, round, round about, roughly, give or take a few. So we're going to do that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to lube it up. Okay, what we're going to use now is we're going to use some petroleum jelly, aka Vaseline. And we're going to use a cotton bud. I think you call these Q-tips in America. I'm not too sure. But we're going to... Essentially, we're going to lube... Ugh, fucking hate Vaseline. It's fucking rank. There, My freaking fingers. So basically, we're just going to get a bit of Vaseline on the end of this uh, on the end of this cotton bud and we're going to uh, just lube it up like so this is essentially so it doesn't peel off on what we're going to use now you might be thinking what where's he going here he's just put green stuff on a base is he going to dip it in stuff well actually no you'll find out the next stage of the plan in just a second because we're about to go to the garden Okie dokie, so here we are in my garden, well, in, in a section of my garden. Now as you've noticed on the floor below us, I actually have some quite interesting flagstones here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use the impression of these to make a relief on this uh, base. Um, now the flags are wet, which helps, because um, it has been pissing it down in the UK at the moment. And essentially all we're going to do is we're just going to um, press it into it, into a, into a section. Mm, possibly, uh, possibly this bit here. Yeah, where there's a nice little crack running down it, although I do need to work out whereabouts that crack is. Where, where am I going? Where am I going? There. Okay, that looks like it'll... Oh, actually, no, we don't want to do that. That's... It's lost a lot of its relief there, so what we're going to do is we're going to look a bit further down. There we go, this, this bit here. What we're going to do is we're just going to simply push it on like that, and then we're just going to press it like this and press it in 
Oh no. It didn't quite work too well. Oh no. It's okay though. Don't worry if you make a mistake. Yes, by the way, I am out in my, uh, I, I, the reason why you can see my bare knee there, even though it's freezing cold, is because I'm actually out here in my boxer shorts, um, because that's how I like to roll. Just chill out in my boxes all day. So we're going to push, I'm going to keep on pushing until we get a really nice relief, such as that. There we go. Where's the, where's the camera gone? Where's the camera gone? There we go. So essentially you get some rather interesting looking relief on there. Now, don't worry too much about um, this bit here where it hasn't actually touched because essentially what you can do there is you can add whatever kind of basing material you want just to make it look a bit more textured or so. So join us back in the room in a second. Okay, okay, we're just gonna get this uh, Vaseline out of the way. I don't know what to do with that now. Chuck it in the bin, that's the best bit. Best bit to do. Yeah. Vaseline so much. Okay, so you might have noticed. Oh, great, Jojo man, that looks a bit shit. You know, it's it's all raised up on the edges and stuff, and it's all overflowing. What we're going to do is we're going to go into trim the edges, just like well, not like that because I realise it doesn't have much of an edge to it. Join us again when I found an actual knife. One, well, found a really shitty old one. I don't know where all my freaking knives have gone. I've probably lost them somewhere in the melee of this uh, of this abomination that I call a, a workspace. So basically what we're gonna do is we're just gonna trim the edges down. I'm gonna try not to cut into the actual base. Yeah let me just uh, try I'll just do it roughly for you guys. You guys can take a bit more care and attention to this. I'm only doing it quick for you. Sound like bloody Neil Buchanan. Art attack, anyone remember that? I sure as hell do. Although, a fair few of you guys are probably a bit young for that show. Because it wasn't out when you guys uh, uh, were kids. Gotta sound old. I'm actually 25 this Wednesday. Woo, it's my birthday! Okay. So. Essentially, what we're going to do, and I mean, don't worry if it's if it looks a bit rough, because you're going to paint over this all, and you're going to add more stuff to it. And there we go. Okay, so now that the edges have been trimmed off roughly. What we're going to do is we're going to let that cure, uh, and then essentially you can do whatever you want with it. Now, this is a really good way of actually making reproduction bases or just loads of different ones, because what you can do when this is done, when this is cured, you can just pop it off, and then do another one. Pop it off. Do another one. Pop it off and do another one. Just keep doing it over and over again until you've got loads. And like I say, it does make some pretty cool relief. You know, you struggle doing that, making that look natural with like a sculpting tool, I guess. But yeah, okay, that's it for the hobby tip. See you guys again. On with the rest of the show. Okie dokie guys, so let's get started. Um, first thing we're going to look at is the great unclean one that uh, Mr. Pidge has uh, been painting. This is a uh, Stingray uh, is uh, actually going to be uh, the proud owner of this when it's done. But as you can see, uh, here it is. Um, so do you want to take us take us through it? Yeah, Pidge? so um, bas basically all we did is Jojo uh, sprayed it white for me because I ran out of white paint, which is really nice. I helped! <laughs> he helped, yay! I helped, yay! yay! And then um, I just basically covered it in different washes of um, greens, browns, flesh, and uh, purple, which is kind of the way you do Nurgle. Um, and then I started to dry brush it with kind of different greens and bleached bones and a few fleshy tones, um, and started to pick out some of these pox marks, which I think look pretty awesome now they've started being painted up. Um, do you agree, Mr. Jones? I, I do agree. I like the pop marks. They were a um, last minute addition, but uh, yeah, I think they yeah. came out rather well. Cool little trick with a pen as well. Just yeah, just stab, stab it in. in. Um, stab yeah. with a pen. Yeah, overall, I like what it is so far, but I think it's looking a little too bright. It's looking a bit cartoony. It looks so. a bit pastely. Yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna work. I'm gonna work into it again with a few more. Washes it looks a bit dry. It needs make, to be a bit make more. Make it a little bit grittier. Needs to be a bit more moist. It's a bit more moist. 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 It's like the word moist. Moist. Though. Moist. Yeah. Um, Moist. Just that, just started picking out the, the redness. You just fade out with the moist. Moist. Ah, moist. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it's big blob of goops with the skeletons. As obviously, this is going to be like a deep kind of brownie play color with. Yeah, it's going to be poo. Um, it's going to be poo. It's gonna poo. It's poo shoot. <laughs> Painting a poo shoot. Um, all these are going to be like purpley red, and more pox are going to be like yellowy. Um, 
Do you, what colour do you want the guardsman? I, do, I don't I, know. I, I think it, Sting, Stingray, if you're watching, uh, do you have a particular? Do you have a friend or anything that's got guardsmen that you particularly don't like? Some Send us a message and um, to, to, to what uh, to what you know colour scheme you want the guardsman to be painted. So yeah, okay, do that. But yeah, um, I think it looks really cool now. It's actually got some colour on it because you can see all the textures being picked out, especially in these areas. And like the guy with his hand coming out. I'm not sure how I'm going to do these little Tyranid spore markers yet. Whatever they're called. Pink. Pink. Like 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 a fanny. Right. <laughs> 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 right, okay, well, um, that's, 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 that's the progress so far on the great and clean one, so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll pop him over there. Whoop. Now we're going to showcase some of, uh, some of Pidge's actual actual work that he's done, and these are some, basically these are some, some things that I've picked out for his collection that I think are just fucking awesome. The first thing we're going to do is this... Warning! May contain fantasy miniatures. Yes, yeah, square bases! <laughs> no! the square bases! Anyway, first thing is this epic fucking dragon. So do you want to? I, don't, I mean, I have no idea. I just think it looks fucking yeah. totally badass. So um, what I'll do. I'll zoom in a little bit so we can. Basically, just pan uh, this guy's called Gorak the Great Drake. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about his history. Um, he was once a high elf dragon who's this big golden scale dragon who was trying to fight off chaos. Um, so he basically dives into the sky and chomps up a, uh, a Lord of Change. Um, and the Lord of Change kind of does his little vindictive laugh and he starts warping into this Chaos Dragon. So his head splits into two and like basically is controlled by this Lord of Zeech for like the rest of time. But if you actually look at the heads on one side, he's still the, um, the High Elf Dragon that he once was, the Golden Great Drake. And in game, this guy can actually uh, remember that he's a high elf dragon and start attacking his other head as well, which is pretty cool. <laughs> um, hey, bastard! Come here, fucking. So, so basically, what I did is um, I got the high elf guy who's kind of um, he's kind of swooping off a um, a rock, kind of like that's his tail, and his head comes down here, and there's this big rock there. So you essentially um, sewed his head to his ass. Yeah. So I inverted him and did a bit of a human centipede on him. Um, I actually have a human centipede model I could show off sometime. Oh yeah, well. definitely. <laughs> we'll bring, bring, bring it on the show another time. I will. Um, but yeah, I actually sculpted over the entire guy, gave him this mushly texture and all these eyes and tentacles and spines coming out of him. The only bits of him that aren't the original model are oh. the wings that have, have been altered because they've been roughed up and added spines. Um, this fin at the back is um, the original model and that side of the face. And wow, every, so pretty and extensive. Everything else is completely. A pretty sculpted. extensive build, then, uh, then really. Yeah. I don't know. How many? Do you know how many eyes there is? Um, on I him? counted twenty-six. Twenty-six. I did actually count. Are they additional eyes? Or? Uh, well, if you actually look, he's got his. He's got his normal high elf eye. And then on the other side, he's yeah, got. Just, his, just looking at that. He's got his. <coughs> mu me. He's got his mutated eye, and then on this side, he has two eyes, and none on that one. <laughs> it's blank. And then, <laughs> and then these other ones around. If you look at his belly, actually. He's got a, a mouth and a... Oh, wow, holy shit! Didn't even notice that! That's cool! It's like the gift that keeps on <laughs> Now, every time, I, every time I go around to Mr. Pidge's, uh, Pidge's house, I um, I always look at this and just think it's fucking amazing and I really want to, to show it off. But anyway, so yeah, that's this awesome, badass dragon. Uh, next thing we're going to show off, we're going to uh, we're gonna do... Um, should, we do should, we do, should we do your ogres? Yeah, go on, we'll, we'll sit with fantasy for we'll, a bit we'll, now. We'll do, we'll do, we'll do the, this, is, uh, I mean, this is a fire belly. Yeah, basically, um, I've got ogres of Cathay. Cathay in fantasy is basically ancient Japan, so they're all like samurais and stuff. And my entire army's samurai themed, and this is my uh, fire wizard. So he's got um, he's the, just a normal ogre, completely re-sculpted to have this kind of like Shaolin style robe, nice freehand um, lettering that's actually from a samurai banner. Little spotty pants, um, bolter wood um, sandals, um, big, so cool. big blade, and the flames are actually from a Naruto toy. Which I stole off my little brother. It looks epic. Nice. I, just, I just love that all the, the all the clothes in this is completely sculpted. It's just yeah. it's just fucking fantastic. And yeah. like it needs to be finished there a little bit. Yeah. Um, well, he actually um, he, he, originally he just had a normal long spear, but um, it had been in the box for about two years because I kind of like didn't do my ogre raids until the new codex came out. Um, so I put more of a fancy kind of wizardy staff on it in the end. But I've not got around to painting it yet. That's so cool. And the reason this guy's on a big log is because he can actually stand behind my front rank and shoot fireballs over the top. Ah, uh, true line of sight. Yep, always fun when you're an ogre. Especially when you're like the size of a mountain. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that guy a lot. Yeah, he's cool. Moving on. Moving on. Moving on. More, more, more samurai. samurai -ness. Oh god, he's uh... Snapped him in two. More oh. samurai -ness. This is um... Pidge is a samurai giant. Yeah, again, um, you, you see the nose and the and the, lore, and the um, head scarf things a little a little 
green because um, it broke off and I had to fix it, touch it up. But this is the giant for my um, Samurai Agarami. Do you want to zoom out a bit so you can yeah, get them yeah. all in? There we go. But yeah, um, just a normal giant sprue. Um, put some armor on him, gave him this badass katana. Um, he's got his other two katanas at the side. I like the... Um, oh, he's got a scabbard and I like, one in there. Yeah, well all Samurais actually carry two swords down there, so um, I like the, um, the golden horse head. Handle. Yeah, that's 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 really cool. cool. I, yeah, um, I, was, I was looking at it before. I really like that. Bit of an experiment on doing um, kind of lettering on the belly, and he's got. A, um, I just think I love all the all the all the back. detail, like the freehand work on the um, on the on the ripped. Yeah, uh, well, legs. Well, that's, that's really nice. His pants are meant to be made out of different fabrics. You so used like the ref you used a reference book, didn't you, for like Japanese yeah, I've, patterns? Yeah, I've, I've got a, I've got a book on um, ancient samurai, so I looked up their actual the actual patterns they use for the kimonos. So it looks like his legs made out of all different kimonos. So like, take a look at the the, um, the kanji on all over it. Does it actually is it actually? And they're all legit? actually ancient samurai banners. That's just, so cool. If you look on his back, he also has the uh, bit of a tramp stamp, um, which is the symbol for um, tenchu, which is um, heavenly punishment. Ah, uh, that's ace. That's so cool. And there's a Gretchen. There's not a Gretchen. There's a, there's a goblin. A squash squab gobo. A squa squasho. Squasho. Squabo. Squabo. <laughs> nah, that's so cool. That was one of your early ones, wasn't it? Um, that's the first model I ever did for my uh, Samurai Yogas. Just as a bit of an experiment to see how they'd go. Just for funsies. Just, Just for funsies. funsies. But yeah, he, he, he does well in game. Nice to stomp some goblins. Stomp the goblins. Stop the goblins. Um, my favourite thing about him is um, basically when you get a giant to come back, you're able to see what it does randomly. And one of the things it can do is jump up and down, where it basically just starts bouncing. Ah, I'm angry! The idea of this noble trained samurai giant wading into battle, katana blazing, and then just goes, fuck it, and jumps up and down on top of one of the <laughs> goblins. <laughs> That's fucking epic. That's okay. my samurai giant. Moving moving on, moving on. 40k stuff now. 40k, yay! Round bases. It's almost like you're in round, round bases or ovular bases, what is this? Oh, hey, look, it's a fucking awesome mycetic spore. I actually don't want to touch this because it looks gooey. It actually looks like it, it, it's going to eat my hand off. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, this, this is this is fucking awesome. This is uh, this is an example of like this is a um, metallic nid color schemes. Yeah, I I really like metallic nid color schemes. It just makes them look so much different. It's just absolutely amazing. So what was this? What was this made of? It was made out of um, a big polystyrene egg, wasn't it? It's basically you, you get a polystyrene ball and just a normal polystyrene ball, which I think I got for AEP from like a local local craft shop. Carved it down so it looks like it's buried itself when it's landed. Um, did the old trick of filling that full of super glue? Oh yeah! In there, um, then I made then I made a lip of green stuff um, <laughs> and kind of gave it this typical xenomorph style labia. Kind of... Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, these are brass rods with just um, green stuff wanded around them. Um, Jojo did actually suggest giving them kind of like more octopusy style tentacles, but I, I didn't want it to look too, like, I didn't want it to look so recognisable. Well, it has a shooting attack, this thing, didn't it? And my, yeah, my um, idea was, because you, you originally had on one of the tent, you had, a, was it a death I, spitter or I was something? thinking of putting a death spitter you, you on You had one originally, yeah. and I said, don't do that. It'll yeah, look better yeah. if you put, like, spines around yeah, like, the so circumference of it. The idea is, basically, as this comes down, that's all one section, and then there's this giant tentacle fin, and as it gets shoot, shoot, um, sh shooted, that's a word, she, yes, as, it gets shot out, as it gets shot out of the ship, shot out of the ship, ship shot out the ship, as it gets shot out of the hive ship <laughs> um, this tentacle kind of like steers it and as it lands it falls off and just dies and like this little flop and all the tyranids kind of burst out um, I filled that full of um I don't know if you can see properly, but you see all these drippies in there. Let's, 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 have, a, let's have a zoom in. Let's see all the. Let's drippies. get close into the action. All the drippies. Oh yeah. Mm. Now, if, if if you're just mm. if you're just looking at that, <laughs> that just looks fucking unpleasant. <laughs> that looks really unpleasant. That looks like almost like your bedroom. It's walls. like something the dog threw up. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's actually based on your bedroom walls. Oh, thank you, thank yeah. you. My bedroom walls don't, yeah. don't, don't. Thank you so much. But yeah, um, <laughs> Sing Singer says no model for this. I, I thought I'd have a go and make my own, and I think it's turned out quite nicely. You got three of these, haven't you? I have two. Two. Yeah, two. Yeah. They are fucking awesome. I do like that a lot. It's just it's it's simple. There's not an awful lot of well, there's a lot of work going, but there's not an awful lot of hard work on it. So this looks absolutely um, amazing. The way you do this texture, so you don't waste all your green stuff, is basically you make your green stuff uh, lip. Labia lips. Labia. That's it. And these. Um, and then you actually get a um, quim. You get you get quim. <laughs> you slap on some quim. <laughs> slap slap on that quim. Bas <laughs> yeah, basically you get um, wall filler and you paint that on and it gives it this kind of texture. Um, when it's, it's all painted it up, it looks really like carapace. carapace. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's fucking. It's actually solid really solid as well. As well. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. So that's that. Yeah, on with the the next one. There, these these uh, these are fucking absolutely phenomenal. I um. 
I've got to say, um, I was very impressed when I saw these, when these have been painted. These are knobs. Mega knobs. It, mega knobs. They're not just knobs. They're knob I was going to say knobs in mega armor, but they're not they're just mega knobs now, <laughs> aren't they? Knobs. That's how long it's been since I've played Orcs. <laughs> but these are just fucking fantastic. I, I actually just don't... I, I'm lost. I'm, I'm lost for words. The painted job on these just really makes them pop. Really makes them pop. And the fact that the only real thing that is Orc on them is the face. And the shoulder pads. The shoulder pads are black orc helmets. If you look at them. Oh yeah, no, I know, I know, no, but I mean like the you know, oh, like actually orc, orc, actually part, orc yeah. is like you know they're all they're all they're cyborgs. So what happens when a big mech gets um, beats up a load of tau, thinks their battle suits are cool, and then suddenly all the or knobs go to sleep and wake up as part of battle suits. It's the idea. <laughs> Integration. That's fucking amazing. Um, I do actually have ten of these and two war boss. It's just you only got three that are painted. Three are painted so far, yeah. The war boss looks fucking sick. The war boss and my lone wolf need to have another grudge. We, match. we do have a bit of a, a, a grudge going on between those two. It's every single time we've had a game, my lone wolf has smacked. Zoom his. in on the face because I like the face on that. Okay, it looks proper. Like I go and get you. <laughs> yeah, boy, squeal, biggie, bring your face to my claw. <laughs> my claw. I gonna put this claw where your sun don't shine, Mister. <laughs> I'm gonna put it up your fanny. <laughs> I'm gonna put it up your ass. I'm gonna put this claw so far up your ass, boy. Your mama gonna feel it. What is it with you and genital gore? I don't know. I, I don't know. I actually don't know. A bit of frustration for Jojo there? No, not frustration. No, I'm, just, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just dirty minded. <laughs> just dirty minded all the time. Best way to be, really, if you ask me. Yeah, so they all have this big ass engine on the back. They all have kind of their own personal um, top banner as well. Oh shit, I didn't even know. They have personal, yeah. Every single one of the ten has their own um, boss stick. Just kind of differentiate them. Which I think is kind of cool. I luckily, I actually managed to make it so none of them have the same head as well, which was pretty hard to get. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Was this, the, was this the project that you kept asking if we've got any orc heads? Got any not orc yeah. Like, yeah, Have yeah. you got any knobheads, mate? Got any knobheads? Got any knobheads? See if you were mine. <laughs> I like that fucking weirdo that no. fucking tried to ask us for jumper cables. He was a pleasant fellow. I know. Fucking hope he dies. <laughs> Um, the DOA stands for Dukes of Acid, if you were wondering. Dukes of Acid. Or dead on arrival in military terms. Or dead or alive. Or dead or alive, yeah. Or, or just simply dough. <laughs> or, um, or, or Dave on acid. Yeah. Or dicks around anus. I, I, I was waiting for you to come up with a fancy <laughs> one. I, I came up with dildos upon animals. Dildos upon animals. <laughs> Anybody else can think of a funny thing for DOA? Please let us know in the comments section in the doobly-doo oh, down below. I, I, this is going to be awful. <laughs> a bit of freehand with the... Um, orc, oh, is it a cow? Oh, is... No, orcs, come on. It's a Blood Angels It's a Blood trophy. Angels yeah. trophy, that's cool. Um, the, that was an experiment in doing checks as well. I think that's a no, all right. What's up? Zoom up! Close up! Oh, he's got a scar on his face. That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah if you look on his back, he's got he's a, a snake bite. He was a snake bite. If you look on his back, he's got a cool little freehand um, goff skull as well. Oh, wow. That's cool. And, oh! and uh, this bit of his engine there is a Tau Commander's head. Oh, holy shit, it is. <laughs> yeah, look. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, basically, you get a Tau battle suit. You r rip its head off, put a hole in the middle, stick a knob's head on. And then give Blue it... Blue bits to it. Give it orky arms. It's actually... I'm, I wasn't too happy with this one because I didn't want it to have the orc feet, but I think because I've shortened the legs, it does work quite well. Oh, yeah, because the, the, the legs on it are quite yeah. spindly, aren't they? Yeah. And you've, yeah you've well, these these are actually um, tank buster mines. This is walking <laughs> on mines. Oh, holy fuck. Um, with an armor plate. And these are actually the bits that his Space Marine's feet go on on a Chaos Space Marine bike. Holy shit! So this is a, this is a prime <laughs> example, guys, of how you can make awesome stuff out of random bits, just random, random bits. Basically, I built ten mega knobs and didn't buy a single model. How much would that have cost you normally? Um, what if, to buy the actual thing? Yeah, one hundred and fifty quid ish. I think they're fifteen quid a mega knob. Like <sighs> Fuck my ass and call me Skippy. Well, on that bombshell, also, mine are much better. <laughs> yes, they are. They are. I agree on that. Well, ladies and gents, on that bombshell. I think we'll have to uh, we'll have to end there because we've rambled on for like 16 minutes. Oh, okay, and we've got yes. other stuff, but we have one more thing for you: the um, reintroduction of the Ask Me Anything section of the show. So I'll roll that for you now. One thing before we start the Ask Me Anything section of the show, I just like to point out that I have a clean-ish desk. 
Look how fucking tidy that is. There's no debris everywhere. Also, one other thing I'd like to point out, because um, she'll kill me if I don't. Um, uh, the other week, well, a couple of months ago, well, the other month, should I say, uh, me and my girlfriend uh, actually uh, decided to, um, well, I decided and she wanted to help to organise my bits. So we have organisation. Organisation from my awesome girlfriend. Organised chaos. Organised, no, organised, it's not chaos anymore. It's order. <laughs> this is order out of chaos. But yeah, very, very special thank you to her. Okay, now I'll actually roll the uh, Ask Me Anything section of the show. Okay guys, so now it's time for the Ask Me Anything section of the show. The part of the shoe, the, the part of the shoe? The part of the shoe, the part of the show where you write in and literally ask me anything. And my, my mask is really wonky today. There you go, I... I, uh, what, what are you doing? I'm trusting you in the face! Get off my face! <laughs> Get off my face! Okay, so, we have the uh, first Ask Me Anything question. We've only got three today. First Ask Me Anything is from our good old friend Reality Bites. And uh, he would uh, like to know, um, what would you prefer? Bionic arms or bionic legs? Personally, myself, I'd prefer one of each. One on the left and one, one on the left. Actually, no, fuck it, bionic arms. No, yeah, bionic arms because I love to go to Chavs and just fucking punch them in the neck. Just in the neck. Nowhere else in the neck. Just enough to collapse to collapse their to collapse their throat a little bit so they choke to death on their own vomit. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, what, what would you prefer? After that, I'm not sure to be honest. Um I, I think one of each would be pretty cool because you could like hop really high into the sky and then do an epic punch <laughs> attack. Epic punch dive! You can reverse punch dive victory hop! You can kick people really hard, squat in the nuts, squat yeah. in the nuts. Although, because you'd have a slight balance issue, if you ever tried to put your weight on your other leg, you would just keel over. <laughs> you, not really, because you, you get used to the fact that you have one bionic leg and, and one regular leg. Like fucking Edward Elric in Format Alchemist, he goes perfectly fine. And I don't think it's like bionic, it's auto male, but you know. Well, if I tie a load of weight to one side of your body, let's see how how quickly it takes. We will we'll, we'll, we'll try and do we'll that. Experiment like, we'll and show you. Experiments, ladies and gentlemen. That's in a future episode. That is. <laughs> but okay, moving on. The next question comes from uh, the Nabu ninety two. I can't read my own handwriting. The Nabu ninety two, and he said, "Can we see all of your Space Wolf and Imperial Guard armies?" Well, the fact is, no. <laughs> No, I'm only joking. I don't have an Imperial Guard army. I only have bits and bobs to use as allied force. Um, actually, my um, Space Wars army, the whole of it, was actually featured on an episode about three episodes ago, something like that. So I'll try and link that in the uh, in the doobly doo down down below down below here somewhere. Um, okay, next question from Michael Hutchington. We like Michael Hutchington. He says, "What's your favourite 40k vehicle?" Personally, off the top of my head, Lehman Russ. Gotta be Lehman Russ. Um, I don't know why, it's just an awesome looking tank, it's an awesome looking vehicle. I just think that it just looks so chunky and it almost looks a little bit out of place in the 40k universe because yeah. it looks so, so like old school. But well, your one is old school. Yeah, mine is the fucking old school, <laughs> the old school Lemurus Exterminator. But yeah, metal bits. I love the fact as well that there's so many different variants of them and they can be pretty much adapted for anything, for any kind of situation. You got the Punisher for taking on mass troops, you got the fucking bog standard Lehman Russ for just making nice dents in armies, you got the fucking Vanquisher for annihilating vehicles. It's just amazing. And plus, uh, the, the, the fucking tanks! I was so good when Space Wars got their fucking Lehman Russ exterminator taken and taken away. Fuck you, Phil Kelly! Fucking die in a fire, you fucking cunt. Um, he's a nice guy. He's not, he's a twat. He's <laughs> alright. If I ever see him, I'm gonna punch, I'm gonna get a bionic <laughs> arm and I'm gonna punch him in the throat. He's alright. So what's your favourite vehicle, then, Pidge? Um, probably a land speeder, actually. Because no, nobody really rates the land speeder, but and I thought it always looked a bit odd and out of place because it's not got a roof or anything, and it's just a flying space marine thing. But I just think it looks so much cooler than like the Storm Raven and the Storm Talon. It doesn't have that blockiness. Yeah, well, the, the Storm, and, um, the Storm Talon's that new space marine, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it looks, uh, it looks like a flying a shit with wings. Um, if you actually take the guns off the side, it looks like uh, Thunderbird Four. Oh, epic. <laughs> it's really cool. Um, but yeah, I was watching. I, want one I was watching the Space Three movie and um, it, a, a Thunder, whatever it's called, Stormhawk, whatever it's called. Storm Raven. No, the big one. Thunderhawk. Thunderhawk. How dare you! I forget. It's a Thunderhawk. It's the they're, they're all lightning birds. Epic. <laughs> okay. Anyway, it drops off a land speed and land speed just goes. 
them just like disappears into the distance That's in one second. Cool. They are, they are so pretty like, fucking fast. I need fast. me some of them. I don't think that the speed of them is represented well enough in the 40k no, game. No, not really. Because to me, they always seem like they've been really slow. Like, I don't know if anybody else thinks this, but like land speeders, if you think about when they fly over, they're like, mm, I don't dead get, slow. The I don't get why they can't like take on flyers. Surely a land speeder can fly at the same height as a dog. Oh, dog fly. Pew 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 not to mention it's the name of the fucking spatial of Primark as well. We're not going to that. Right, okay, guys. Um, thank you very much for watching. As usual, don't forget to write your Ask Me Anything question in the comment section in the doobly-doo down below. I know I've said that twice. Are you... That's what... That's... There. Uh, no, it's not. It's, it's here. No, it's... It's not. It's here. It's... It's here. It's not. It's confined to this section. No, it's... It's it's down. It's along okay. the bottom. Oh. It's along the bottom. What that? <laughs> Okay, well, Mr. Pidge is gone, so um, thank you very much for watching, guys, and I will see you again soon. See you now. Goodbye.